What's up, I'm Aiden. You are watching what is still known as my barn conversion vlog. Let's address the elephant in the room. I'm just going to check out what's happened here. Quite a bit of water in. The foundations are being dug. This is a couple of clips. What's been happening? So the aim of the game was to basically take this down. So it's already been reduced by 800 over there. So in this corner, it was supposed to be two meters deep. So because we've flattened the site, it's a lot safer and uh, just easier to all round to get things done. So that's being dug there. The, um, the cartilage base is nearly done. We will see that next time. And uh, everything's been going up the field, which is obviously very tracked out. And this is my mountain in the dirt. So I'd say it's a good two, three grands that I've probably saved here by not getting it taken away. So if you get the opportunity, if you buy an barn conversion and you get the chance to buy a little bit of agricultural land with it at agricultural prices, then it's probably a good idea to buy a little bit extra and dump all your stuff. Otherwise it's going to cost you a bomb. We've got building inspector coming today and the warranty bloke. So I'm just filming this before I finish my last one, so it's going to be a bit of a muddle up on my camera. But it's just one of them things, so what I'll do is I'll leave you guys there for a minute. I'll cut in obviously when the concrete comes in tomorrow and everything like that. And then, um, and then I'll let you know what, what the situation is from there. We'll talk about what's happened, why are we doing this now, and how I'm saving money. I'll see you then. So the foundations were dug the day before this. What you want to do is dig the foundations and then pour the concrete as soon as possible, basically. This is in the winter, so it wasn't really the best optimal conditions. It rained all night and it's just sod's law that that's going to happen all of the time. So in the morning there was lots of water. The others didn't really want to come in. They was going to leave me to do it by myself. But I, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning. I couldn't get back to sleep. So by 6 o'clock I was out with a torch checking out the foundations. There was loads of water. 
it had all like the, the sides had caved in so we spent like the first hour or two just all three of us in the trenches digging out the bits that had fallen in onto the oversight the first couple of trucks came and then we realized that the company had a concrete pump so we booked that in and then it come by the third or fourth load i think it was that's 10 times easier it was 500 quid get one if you're doing this kind of thing so let's get this out of the way. We're in the caravan. It's night time. We've got to talk. I've got pens. I've got paper. I've got plans. So what's happened? Bloody hell. Uh, I've had a nightmare of a day. I'm recording almost three different vlogs at the moment. It's getting a bit hard to juggle things and as well as the build and everything like that. So you know, it's obviously the barn basically had to come down so i mentioned it before originally what what had happened was my structural engineer had decided that we should go for a piled foundation with a ring beam um, and then a slab so the piles there was going to be 37 of them that's the plan there so obviously quite a lot and then you have a metal cage go all around the outside now, that, we got to realise structural engineers, architects, even builders really, they don't care how much you're going to spend. And I don't think anyone would ever actually step up and go, actually, that's really expensive. Why don't you do it like this? It was up to me to work that out. The reason why we was going piles is because of the three oak trees that you might have seen before. And as well as my um the the old wall that was obviously close to the boundary i spoke to my neighbor uh about his oak because that was the closest one and it was only young young oak it was about four or five meters tall i asked if i could move it because you can get a tree spade to like basically take it out anyway he said just cut it down just cut it down so that was brilliant like it's great to obviously get on with your neighbours because they'll they'll help you out so much. My both my neighbours have been brilliant actually. So we took the tree out and then I basically sat there and I worked out well before I took the tree out, I worked out how much of a saving it would be. So what I done before, no one's gonna help you do this kind of thing. This is Spons, it's an architect's and builder's price book, 2021, it's still 2020. Now this was 170 quid, but it helps you, obviously you, you can go through and it should be prices there or thereabouts of what you should be paying for each and every kind of thing that you could even imagine under um, construction. People, obviously you turn, turn your, like nose up 170 quid for this but i worked out the piled foundations and the ring beam and the slab should come in around the 70 grand mark or so and um i actually got a quote in for the poles and ring beam and slab um that come in at 85,000. Now, Sean, obviously, I was going to get the piles done separately. He was then going to do the rest. I reckon it would have come closer to the 70 the, rather than the 85. But that's a lot of money. A lot of money to bury in the ground. So I then worked out we could do trench fill with a block and beam floor for maybe like 45,000 so it's, it's almost half the price and it just made sense so obviously we took the tree out I, I agreed it with my structure engineer that i'm taking the tree out we'll make sure the wall's safe and everything like that anyway uh so obviously my builder he didn't really want to take the job on and do the foundations with that steel frame up because what you've got to imagine is, obviously you've seen, we've reduced the, the, the grounds below just to make it safer because the trenches were still at two, two metres in either corner. And that's, that's a lot to dig out 
especially with a big metal frame suspended above your head. I don't know, maybe there was like 10 tons of steel just hanging in the air at, at that point. It would have been. You can obviously get a scaffold inside and bird cage it and everything like that, and you dig, dig out one bit at a time. But digging two meters down to underpin it, it's just almost impossible. And I reckon we could have done it, but it would have cost a ridiculous amount of money that we just haven't got. So it just weren't going to happen. So ultimately, when it when it comes down to it, was we decided that it was the safest thing to do to take down the frame and the most cost effective at the same time so that enabled me to do the trench field foundation save a load of money and do everything safely so the issue now is that our planning application is for a conversion it's no longer a conversion, it's now a new build, even though it's going to be exactly the same as it pretty much was planned. I know people like the builders, whoever's doing the brickwork or anything like that, they're not going to be particularly happy that I'm doing things a bit weird and that I'm still trying to recreate what was there, but better, if you understand. Because I don't want to change anything. I, 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 it is a barn conversion to me. I want to respect everything about what what was there originally and what, what existed. So I've kept the frame. I've marked everything out. The trusses are definitely going back in. See, I, I don't care if I'm doing that by myself. We'll, we'll do them black and everything. Everything, the plans are going to be exactly the same. So what you tell me, should I now not call this barn conversion vlog? Because if you say, right, okay, we started with A, which is the original barn, okay? And what we was getting to was B. And this is the finished barn. Now that was just literally the frame that was pretty much staying because everything else needed to be rebuilt anyway. Now I could have went there a to B, barn conversion, and then that would have cost loads and loads and loads and loads of money, which just isn't really feasible. If I would have paid something, it's, it's extra on the insurance as well. If you dig down more than, I think, 1.2 metres, then obviously builders' insurance companies, they need to know about it and you need to inform them. It's just loads and loads of money. Now obviously this is what we was aiming for and it should have been straight now. Now what we're doing, we're still going for this, but this obviously kind of went and we're kind of going like that to save a little bit of money. So it's going to end up exactly the same as it should have been anyway. But it's just a different way of going about things. Being a new build, that means that uh, I can get 0% on the VAT, so that, that's handy. But it's just, what, what what else can I do? Like It's just impossible. And what's more important? What's more important? So planning is currently in at the moment. The issue with it, you can't. In terms of planning permission, if you get uh, planning permission for a conversion, there's two different types of amendments that you can do. You can do a non-material amendment, which is a weird way of saying it because that means that you're just changing something slightly like the materials, like a, a different tile or something like that, even though it's non-material. And then you've got a minor amendment. Now, min minor amendments, you can, say, increase the size of your build by 25% and it's classed as an, a, a minor amendment. Even though we are keeping everything exactly the same, the plans, the drawings, everything will go back in exactly the same. The only thing that will change is the title, 
which will no longer say barn conversion. And because of that, the title change isn't covered by a non-material amendment and it isn't covered by a minor amendment. Which is kind of a weird way of doing things. Surely there there would be... there's there oh, I know there's been plenty of times where people have tried to do barn conversions and it's just literally, it's not been feasible from what they've started off with. And it's just not safe and it's just too expensive. It's, it's unec uneconomically viable, basically. So you tell me, should I rename this to like self-build vlog? A new build vlog? Is it still the barn conversion vlog? I don't know. Anyway, I hope that addresses anything that you've you've been thinking. Um, obviously, it wasn't meant to go this way. You just have to deal with things as it as they come along. Um, sorry about the waffle, but if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Hit the bell notification. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.